You know, they, they say that the first impressions are very important. How we present ourselves and how we gain impressions of others in the very beginning of our relationship, it has an impact for a long-term establishment of a good or a negative relationship. The same thing happens in marriage. You know, the first year is almost the key to the rest of the marriage. There is a passage in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24, 5. When a man is newly married, he shall not go out with the army or be liable for any other public duty. He shall be free at home one year to be happy with his wife whom he has taken. The scriptures are very clear, you know. Marriage is one of the most important institutions on earth in the kingdom of God. God has purposed that husband and wife marry and produce children and in such a way like it says in the New Testament, present a picture of the relationship between Christ and the church. And that's why it is so important in our relationships to establish a proper tone. And the first year to that relationship is really the key. First thing that he should not be doing is going to war. In other words, he should not be away from his home or do some public office, public duty here. It says do some business that is going to take him away from his home. In other words, there should be priorities. The first priority should be God in my life. I should always have time meditating, reading, and thinking about the Word of God. The second priority in my life should not be the business or public duty or any other job, but it should be my spouse. In other words, I should have meaningful relationship with my wife on a daily basis. And watching TV together does not count in that. It is when we read Bible together, when we make love together, when we go to church together, when we just sit together uh, and talk or walk together, hold hands and talk together. Being together with one another, focused on one another, listening to one another, looking the other person in the eye and saying, tell me something about you. How can I love you? How can I take care of you? How can I be the best husband? A husband could ask to you, and the wife can ask, how can I be the best wife to you? What is it that I need to do to please you? What is it that I can do to bless you? What is it that I can do to love you? To be all that you have always hoped. Of course, none of us can be all that our spouse hopes in us, but it doesn't mean we can't try, it doesn't mean we can't ask, and it doesn't mean we can't learn. It says here that the first job, the first priority of a husband in the first year is to cheer up his wife, to make her rejoice, samach, to have joy that she will be happy that she is married to him. You know, the focus is on the husband. I, I believe both husband and wife are important in the relationship and have their own part to contribute. But I believe that the key is really the husband. Because a wife, in most cases, is a responder to how the husband acts towards her. And if you as a husband learn to think beyond yourself, learn to think that she has feelings, that she has desires, that she has needs, and focus on meeting those needs as best as you can, and it says here, cheer her up so she can smile, she can laugh, she can rejoice to be happy, she can wake up and, and look forward to see you. Like I have a little child, for example, my sixth child, Deborah, she, she wakes up in the morning and I hold her in my hands and she's so excited that I hold her. My wife is happy to see me too. I'm happy to see her as well. And that's something that you need to nurture in the relationship by focusing on loving that other person, by meeting as many of her needs. It says that you and I should do whatever we can to cheer him up, to make them happy. So the focus is not, as I said, on us, but on the, our spouse. The text says here that we should make our wife happy. So, so what makes your wife happy? We are saying those three wonderful words, I love you. My wife never has enough of 
those words, she always loves to hear him, hear them. Then hugging her, that's a nice thing, just hugging your wife and hold her, gently caress her on the back and say, I love you. Or kissing her. Or taking care, if you have children, taking care of the children. Or taking your wife out in a restaurant sometimes. Or to drink coffee, if you drink coffee. Or just to have a little biscuit. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Or just to walk and hold hands and talk together, plan together, organize together. Listen to one another. Not just to the words that are being spoken, but to the spirit that comes across, the emotions that come across and minister to that emotion. Minister to that spirit, respond to it. Uh, what is it that will make your wife happy? You know, every person is different and your wife is unique. So you need to pause, spend time with her and ask her, both God in his word and your wife will teach you how to love her better. You know, I, I practice quite often with my wife and I say, you know, what are the areas in our lives, in our relationships that you have noticed where I have expressed love to you? In other words, that you have taken that as love, that you have understood that as love. And then she will point out, you know, when you hug me, when you kiss me, when you love me, uh, uh, when you bring me a flower, occasional flower, when you write me a little love note, when you teach the children and us the Word of God, when you pray for me, uh, all kinds of things. She, and then I would ask her, you know, what is it that I can do in the coming days and in the coming weeks and months and years in the future that I can improve on that? And then she could tell me that. And the same thing, she can practice that for me. And, and, and when we both do that, we pay attention to the other person. But in this case, as I said, the key is the husband. It's so important that you love your wife. One of the other things is key for the woman. You know, it's like a death blow if you are looking at other women. Uh, either outside, you walk out and you turn your head all the time, or, or you go on internet sites and you watch what you're not supposed to do. Or even if you do go, and, and make love to another one, that is death blow to your relationship. That's not how you cheer up your wife. So if you even think about it, Jesus says, even if you have a thought of that, it's committing sin. So you shouldn't even entertain the thought, let alone go and do those things. Now, I have written a book together with my wife called His and Her Cup of Love, which actually won an award um, here in Canada. Um, by the Word Guild of Writers, and I would highly recommend it. It's 400 pages, and it really teaches everything that a married couple should know. Everything that a married couple who wants, the, the couple that wants to marry, or a couple that is already married. How to choose your spouse. Um, one other chapter, for example, um, how to prepare for marriage. How to choose the right spouse. The responsibilities of married life. What is his responsibility? What is her responsibility? Intimacy and sex as a gift of God. Um, then adding children to this. What do you do when the children come across? Uh, managing your finances. Finances are one of the key elements uh, of dispute among married couples and one of the key reasons for divorce. And then how you can keep your marriage strong. I will highly recommend you avail yourself of this book and bless your marriage or, or bless somebody uh, in your family that you know could use this and benefit from it. I know you will not be disappointed. It will be a great blessing.